So for a group of designers, designers and architects, I'm going to do 10,000 years of architectural history in 10 minutes. And I'm going to link it to where we're going next. If you go back to the title of the thing, why do we bother with buildings at all? Gosh, if we could have a wow environment for a bunch of young people connecting socially over distance, saving energy, saving the planet, why the hell do we go to buildings? What's it for? We start the project and the immediate things that bound the project are not why, it's budget and time to move in, right? When can we get it done? Are we gonna measure ourselves against that? Of course we're gonna problem diagnose up front. But the real question is, why do we bother to even diagnose the problem with buildings? What's it for? So if we go back to the beginning of space, of course, initially there was a dimension of space that was about shelter. And the next piece that got added onto shelter fairly quickly, and you can see very quickly why I'm not a designer, was this whole idea of security. Because in the short term, shelter was security. But as we got more and more people, and they started to sort of think it might be nice to have some things that some of the other people had, we started to develop these social premises of societies that required us to have dimensions of security. So the sort of evolution of the social self, if you will, the social psychology of large groups. So for the first 9,900 years of the conversation, these three things more or less did a pretty good job of covering what we needed to think about. Deep back in there someplace, there was a fourth, which I almost forgot about. Symbols, right? So place started to mean something as we became more capable of the abstractions, got less and less concerned about simply keeping our bodies alive and keeping ourselves safe. We started to think about larger issues like we, and then larger issues like metaphysics and the grand issues of symbology and place. So those four things more or less got us through the first period of time. What happened at about 1900 was a series of innovations that were related to buildings that happened to parallel a form of organization that we're all quite familiar with, so I won't draw this out extensively. At about the same time also, we saw a series of things, technology changes going on in the built architecture world that made a big difference. And they were things like electricity, lighting, elevators, and then a couple of work typology or work uh, technologies, the typewriter, which arguably was the, one of the most important devices for the spread of knowledge since Gutenberg. Because it took something, Gutenberg, of course, was the mass printing of the same thing. Typewriters became the mass printing of different things. By the time we got to the mid-90s, it had become clear that this sort of organizational thing was really important, and technology's effect on organizational design and development was really the key issue. In fact, we spent most of the 90s investing here to support the changes here. This is what f allowed global business to basically blossom. And the sort of people dimension of this was still important, but it became separated. And we thought about buildings, but not nearly as much, because frankly, we didn't have any money to spend on them. We were spending it all here. Right? So we took this system apart and said, you know, let's get truly analytical about this because that'll solve everything, right? Optimizing for business results basically meant this, that we spent a lot of money here to invest in new systems of design, whether it's sort of SAP level organizational rethinks, whether it's restructurings until the cows come home, whether it's all sorts of sort of different ways of looking at how organizations could use their people differently. And we kind of redefined the system this way and carved this thing off and it became less and less important. So instead of having the sort of architect and the business owner on the golf tee talking about the vision of the edifice for the business as it would project culture forward, we had the fabled real estate department achieving ascendance that basically said, you know, space is expensive. It's really quite expensive. 
they, they, it's an expense, it's bad basically. So the best space can be, since it's so expensive, is less bad, so make it cost less, right? So space is bad, make it cost less became the mantra during this period as we invested here. And I'm overly caricaturizing this by an order of magnitude probably, just to make the points clear. The other thing that we saw happening towards the end of this period, which is kind of where we are now, was these two things starting to come back together. So when this came back into the game, what happened was we began to think not just about the physical relationships between buildings and technologies, again here, but we started to think about the cognitive relationships. So Drucker's point about knowledge work or Florida's point about the creativity starting to blossom forward was taking roots, not only at the cognitive level, but also at the social level. And of course, now we're building the human factors continuum, right? For those of us who live in that world, heading towards the cultural. So we ended up with buildings that as time went on, up, moving up towards today, where these two pieces are starting to come back together again. And in fact, we're seeing this side as the toolbox to support the behaviors and financial well-being over here. Okay, interesting. So where we see it going forward is really in a simple spot. In some ways it's back to a Venn diagram that we're familiar with, but we're talking about it differently today. We're talking about it as the sort of aggregation of new work. So 50 years forward on knowledge work, add creativity, make it global, capitalize on all of the inherent potential of people in this sort of piece over here that we'll call simply workers. And then let's think about the workplace, but let's remember that as it's become reinvented in the last five years and will be for the next 15 probably, that this is both physical and virtual, but it's different because it's one thing now. So we no longer make decisions about the physical capability of a building to handle a new technology. We now make financial decisions about the mix of tools in this toolbox to support the distributed work phenomena of, of our workforce being everywhere. These models then take us through steps that are quite clear and quite predictable when we look back. And so this sort of continuity of this is a really important idea when we look at what's next, right? Because this is all about establishing trajectory. You try to cook it down to the sort of organizational beliefs and impacts from this global stuff. So if we, we're trying to operationalize this, right? My point in showing you this is simply to say this, that whenever you try and stand way back, way back, and figure out what's likely, not what's possible, but you gotta start there, not what's probable, you need to go through that, but ultimately what's likely. You gotta look really broadly, and there are an awful lot of very smart people who are very opinionated about what matters. 